Hey, what's going on guys? Alex Duzikin here from Mr. Build It. Welcome back to another week in the workshop. If you're brand new to the channel, we're not experts. We're just a bunch of DIYers who are not afraid to try and fail. Now, if that's something you're into, make sure you hit that subscribe button and tap that notification bell. That way you'll be notified every time we put a video out, which is every week. Now, with that being put aside, this week we partnered with Craig Tools, that's right, the makers of the Craig Jig and so many other cool tools, to bring back what we're calling just a trip down memory lane, an oldie, a goodie, the vintage kids' school desk, and give it a modern day resurrected look. Now, without wasting any time, let me introduce to you guys the modern day school desk, and let's get into the video. Let's go. In this video build, we decided to tackle on the top writing storage compartment of the desk first. Now, chances are you're not watching this video with a pen and paper jotting down the dimensions for your cut list. So I decided to save that hassle for the end. You can go to the link in the description of this video and find the link to the buildsomething.com website and you'll find a full set of plans and the blog tutorial for you to follow things step by step. Now, I did, however, want to elaborate on the side pieces of the writing compartment desk. As you can see, there's a taper that runs from a six and a half inch and drops all the way down to four inches. To accomplish two identical cuts, I sandwiched the two boards together, built a tapering jig for my table saw, and then used the Craig bench clamp system to clamp the two pieces together down. I brought it to my table saw and then created one swift cut, creating two identical mirror images of each other. After ensuring a good dry fit, we decided to start working on the lid. The lid would be made up of two parts. Part one would be the narrow four inch part that would be fixated permanently to the compartment. And the second part of the lid would be the part that actually lifts up and down and work as the writing surface area. We decided to continue the grain pattern. So we took the overall big piece, laid it on top of the compartment and marked exactly where the taper began. This would split up the two pieces of the lid. When assembling the top writing compartment itself, we used the Craig pocket hole jig along with pocket hole screws and wood glue to joint all the pieces together. We were strategic to place the pocket holes on the inside of the desk and the underneath side of the desk. That way they would be hidden and you won't notice them from the outside. Now, by this point, you probably noticed I'm using tape to line some of these joints together, and that's specifically to allow for the wood glue to squeeze out onto the tape. It'll make for so much easier of a cleanup. That way, I just remove the tape and none of it will get on the plywood. The chair frame is another great example of a place we're going to need to repeat two identical cuts. To do so, we're going to also sandwich it together. We're going to use tape to wrap the entire thing together, mostly because the tape will allow for the project to be held together, but at the same time, allow us to actually draw on the area that we need. Now, the third benefit would be to prevent tear outs, but the bandsaw is probably the least tool that's likely to create that, but this will definitely help. After making our cuts on the bandsaw, we're gonna keep the tape on and bring the pieces over to our sander to clean up all the blade marks that are left inside the radius cuts. We're also gonna take the opportunity to round over all the edges. That way we have two identical pieces that'll create that same exact finish. After removing the tape and examining our two replica pieces, we're gonna move on to creating the backrest and the seat portion of the chair. As you can see here, we're using the Craig jig with wood glue to attach the backrest and the seat portion to the side frames that we've creating for our chair. Now, one thing you're probably noticing here is that I'm using a little bit of a spacer block, which essentially is just a scrap piece of wood to consistently sit the bottom and the back parts to the frames at the very same consistent depth. Now the base. The base of our writing desk will be made out of a two x four Douglas fir that later on will be painted. After ensuring we finished all of our final cuts, we're gonna take and create the front and back four x four post for this project. Simply to do so, we're gonna take the pieces, glue them up and set them aside for one or two hours of optimum drying time. While that's drying, we're gonna take the remainder of the cut list, run those pieces through our table saw to final three inch width, trimming off the factory rounded over edges. Doing so will ensure that the project on the base looks like it's a clean, sharp, slick base. 
Like we mentioned earlier, now that the posts are dry, we're gonna trim them to our final three by three inch dimensions. Another specialty piece we're gonna create is a support for the underneath part of the compartment, which is shaped in a T. So we're gonna call it the T support. The T support is made out of a long piece and a short piece, mitered at the ends and joined it together with wood glue and pocket holes. Now let's put it all together. The base will have pocket holes and wood glue, and we're gonna face the pocket holes down. Then we're gonna drive attaching the post with four three inch long screws. Then the top of the supports are gonna be wood glued and driven down with three three inch screws. Now let's put it all together. I'm gonna attach the seat through a two by four from the bottom using one and three quarter inch screws. Then for the top compartment, I'm gonna use it the same exact screws except we're gonna stagger them as much as we can to prevent flex. We're not using wood glue on any of these parts, just in case later on we need to take things apart and maybe refinish them. Now the top lid. Remember how it had two parts to it? Well, we're gonna take the four inch narrow part and glue it down to the main storage compartment while we take either birch or oak edge banding, whatever you find in your local store, and iron on concealing all the exposed ply on our current project. After we get all of our edge bending on, we're gonna start sanding flush and cleaning up all these edges. And to do so, we're gonna take either a sanding block or just a scrap piece of wood with 150 grit sandpaper and start cutting off and sanding flush all the transition pieces, making each piece look like it's one solid piece of wood. And at this point, we're gonna start wrapping things up and getting things ready for paint and stain. And to do so, we're gonna take wood filler, patch up all the wood knots in the Douglas fir. We're also gonna use our sander and sand everything down to 150 grit, both the plywood and the Douglas fir. We're gonna finally attach our lid with a piano hinge on the inside and get it ready. Now there will be a small little quarter inch gap at the bottom between the lid and the compartment itself. And what you wanna do is put two rubberized stoppers in there. That way your kids don't slam this thing down and create a loud noise. Now let's talk about some of the finishing products I used here for the stain on the desk compartment and the chair itself. It's a product called Weathered Oak by Minwax. It's very easy application. It has hints of gray in it to kind of distress it and give it this aged kind of look that I really like. For the paint on the base, it's a product from Bear. The color is called Silky White. It's both a uh, paint and primer together. It applies very easy, but that Silky White, it's nice, clear, and just kind of a refreshing color. It neutralizes both this older look with this modern approach. And of course, I know my kids are animals. are gonna try to destroy the paint and the stain. So what I'm gonna do is finish things off with a water-based clear coat. It's a satin from Verithane. It applies very easy. I'm just using an HVLP sprayer to apply and let it dry. Well, that is it for me this week. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. A huge thank you to Craig for sponsoring this video. Remember, all the detailed plans, tutorials, schematics will be on the Build Something website. The link will be down in the description below. Make sure you go check it out and give it some love. Make sure you like, comment, share this video with your friends. Like always, it does mean the world to me. I appreciate you guys' support. Tune out this week. We'll see you guys next week. See ya. Bye.